Well, for more on the trouble that us small businesses are seeing right now, I want to bring in the CEO of Simplify Power, Catherine Von Berg. And Catherine, it's very interesting, just going off of the conversation I was having with Julia in the previous segment, small businesses, they are facing an unprecedented hardship at this point. And I know many are struggling just in terms of keeping their doors open, keeping their production facilities up and working. Uh, you at Simplify Power, you've made some adjustments to reopen your California factory in a pretty timely manner. You were closed for a couple of days. Let's start there just in terms of how you were able to adapt your business model and stay afloat in a time when there's so much uncertainty out there. Sure. For me, the first place to start as a CEO is looking at salaries throughout the company. And there is a great disparity between C-suite executives and frontline workers, meaning our factory uh, personnel, but also people on the front lines in sales and engineering. What that means is when we look at hard times, and we found it in 2010, and we've weathered a lot of hard times uh, from fires and evacuations in California to economic downturn. The first place I look is where we can cut costs that are going to preserve our existing uh, employee force. Without the efficacy of our products and our services that we offer to the market, we don't have a company. And so retaining executive pay is the first place uh, that I think is where money can be found. Uh, during this downturn, we are taking advantage and I look uh, I, I advise other companies to look at the Families First Act. We have employees who are home because they are sick, their family member is sick, or they have children who are no longer in school and do not have daycare. So taking advantage of the two-thirds pay for the Families First Act. But as a company there, we uh, have a strong enough balance sheet currently that we're making up the delta. For us, the employees are critical the frontline employees, the, those that are making products and selling. So the last thing we want to do is create more economic hardship for them. And then as other uh, uh, discussions that you've been having point out the collateral damage, if our employees are furloughed or laid off, uh, how do they pay their rent, their landlords, uh, mortgages that have to be paid, there's a domino effect. So as a company, we're very aware of protecting our employees from a financial standpoint, but also a health standpoint, as well as the communities that they and we serve. Uh, in addition, we're also taking advantage of the Paycheck, Paycheck Protection Plan uh, through the CARES Act, and that caps salaries for a year at 100,000. If you look across your enti entire employee base, and you utilize those funds through these SBA loans and banking institutions, uh, if you reduce pay of everybody in the company, really the executives, and make sure that we continue to pay at the current rate all our employees, that is a short-term, but more importantly, a long-term solution for really protecting the integrity of the company. Yeah, Catherine, I want to ask you about the payroll protection program because it rolled out on Friday and there's been so many other small business owners who have been saying that they've been having difficulty submitting applications for the loans and also then therefore being uh, subsequently app potentially approved for those loans. You applied for the loan, like you just said. What was your what was the process like and have you heard anything uh, from the lender at this point? So we have a banking institution uh, relationship with B of A mm -hmm. and we were able to get on their portal and file the paperwork. Now, it will be weeks, if not months, before we realize those funds potentially. But again, uh, referring to the earlier conversation, balance sheets are so important. It's, it's uh, critical to point out that we are a privately held company. We have not taken venture capital like other companies in our technology energy sector. And so what that means is since 2010, we have had to be very fiscally disciplined in every dollar. We grow based on our revenue. And again, our technology and sales into the market, solving problems in the market so that we are relevant. So we understand the importance of preserving cash and having reserves uh, while also accessing these types of government funds that are available. 
Hey, Catherine, I want to uh, just focus on the fact that your production facility is now up and running. And I know that's in the shop behind you right now. You have workers in that facility that are uh, helping produce uh, the batteries, the products that you make. How are you ensuring worker safety at this point? Because that is a concern of so many employees that are still showing up on a day to day basis. Sure. We shut down operations the evening of March 19th, right after Governor Newsom made the announcement, uh, the stay at home uh, uh, recommendation. So as of March 20th, Friday, we were shut down that Friday through the entire next week, reopening this past Monday. Um, During that six day period, We paid all our employees, even though they were at home, again, not wanting to contribute to uh, the duress that everybody is in, um, but then made changes in our manufacturing uh, line so that there is at least six feet of distance between each employee. We're wearing masks and gloves, refreshing those uh, uh, resources every day. Um, And we actually hired a new person, uh, employee to come in who cleans our facility uh, throughout the day, at least four times a day, every doorknob, every door jam, the entire production line, the communal spaces, our lunchroom, refrigerators, everything is wiped down with alcohol over four times a day. And that's been critical too. Um, I would also say that uh, creating protection in terms of the uh, Homeland Security essential critical infrastructure workforce. Our company, the energy storage solutions that we manufacture, really satisfies three of those categories uh, from manufacturing to energy to first responders. So by virtue of us being up and running again after six days of being down, keeping everybody on payroll, but looking at the longer term uh, benefit, we are now able to work with frontline workers that need energy storage for field hospitals, pop-up clinics from Texas to Sierra Leone. We have first aid and clinics going and running with renewable energy in our batteries. It's critical to think about uh, backup power is usually thought as generators, gas or diesel, which expel fumes that are toxic and COVID-19 is a respiratory condition. And these generators for field and pop-up hospitals can contribute to the problem, not solve the problem. So we're working with providers globally to fight this pandemic and to provide energy services. Catherine Bomberg, CEO of Simplify Power. Thanks so much for taking the time this afternoon. Thank you so much.